Hey friends, I'm Quenby, Quenby Gallahan. I've been a licensed marriage and family therapist here in California where I live for over a decade. And my channel, The Grateful Therapist, is all about mental health and personal growth. So if you like learning about that kind of stuff, like I do, make sure you're subscribed and that you turn that little bell on so you know when a new video about mental health comes out. Today's video is all about working with teenage clients. I'm going to share a few things with you that I like to always have on hand when I have a teenager coming into my office, especially if it's the first session or one of the early sessions. So I work with families. I work with people of all ages, but I work primarily with teenagers. I'm kind of known in the community as someone who's good with teenagers. I've worked a lot in the schools here in Sonoma County where I live. So I've had a lot of experience working with teens. So I like to share with you anything I've learned. Maybe it'll help you too. If you haven't, make sure to check out this video. I put out a video all about how to help teens feel comfortable with therapy and actually want to be there. So of course we know that all teens are different. Every once in a while I get a teenager who plops down on the couch in my office and they're comfortable right away and they just are ready to talk, 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 kind of ready to go. Um, but I often also get teenagers who are a little what we call like slow to warm up or a little quieter, especially in the beginning. And that's actually really okay. Especially in the beginning, I like to normalize with teenagers that they don't know me yet. I'm essentially a stranger. I mean, I'm a trained professional who knows how to work with teens and counseling, but it might take them a little bit to be comfortable with me, to build trust and to warm up. So it's okay to take your time. You don't have to rush right in and do amazing therapy interventions right away. In the beginning, especially with teens, it's really great to take the time to build the relationship and build the rapport. So let me share one thing that I always like to have on hand, and this is something you can make yourself, and um, it doesn't cost you anything, and it's a great tool. Okay, so the number one thing that I always have on hand when I'm working with teenagers is my question cards. I have so many different packs of these. You can make them yourself, but they have questions that are designed to help bring a teenager out, and they're great kind of counseling and assessment questions. For example, this one says, what I want most out of life is, one of my favorite things to do is, the feeling I have the most trouble expressing is, the hardest thing about being my age is, these are great conversation starters. They're a great way to help a teen warm up, start talking, a great way for you as the therapist or counselor to start um, gathering information for your treatment plan, for assessment. Um, sometimes what I'll do, just kind of for fun, I used to do this a lot when I ran groups with teenagers, is I'll kind of fan them out and let the teen pick, and they kind of like that and makes it a little bit more fun. But you can also make question cards on a certain theme. So you can design these for your particular quiet client or your particular intervention. For example, if you know the teen you're working with is really struggling with issues in their family, you could select cards that you already have made that are family questions like, what do people in your family think about you? What do you think they would say about you? What's your relationship like with your dad? Who's the most important person in your family to you? You could design them specifically for the teen that you have in mind. So these are like, I take these everywhere I go. I always have them on my little table next to my chair, ready to go, just in case that um, it's a little hard to bring a client out or to do something different. Really great, make yourself some question cards. Okay, friends, so I am not a credentialed art therapist. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist here in California, but I use a lot of art therapy techniques or art activities. Every session, I make sure that I've got paper of different sizes, colors, textures, some markers, some pencils, some art supplies available. Some teens feel better talking and can talk about harder stuff when they're actually drawing or coloring something. And it can be something very simple. And I usually say to them, this is not about being an artist. This is just about doing something with your hands Why we talk. And it can actually calm down their nervous system and make it easier for them to talk about challenging things. Also, some teens, they just don't love being face to face with eye contact the whole time, especially if they're sharing something that's vulnerable for them. So I like to just, I'll sit and kind of doodle and let them do the same. 
But along the lines of having art supplies for every session, I almost always have a blank tree drawing. Let me show you that and tell you different things that you can do with it. Okay, so you can see that this is just kind of a blank tree here. This is something that I got out of clip art or something on the computer. I would actually enlarge this and have it bigger. You can also stencil some of your own trees. So what I actually prefer is something like this. This is on watercolor paper, and this is just cut out tree-like thing um, and glued onto the paper. And I use these trees for so many different things. Again, this is a tree that you can have and you can design your intervention depending on what the needs of your client are. So I might have them do something like put all their strengths, things that are great about them, things they're proud of, up in the branches and um, use it that way to identify about self-esteem, self-confidence, how they think about themselves, or I might have them put all their values up here in the tree. And then I'll have like, um, they can paint it, they can put collage items on it. Let me show you one that's a little more finished. This is an example that I have on hand, one that I did a while ago when I was um, using this intervention for resilience. So I put things that I'm proud of like, um, up here in the branches and accomplishments or words that inspire me down here. But you could use this with almost anything. So you could do like negative thoughts up in the tree, more positive thoughts down below. You could use this for social issues. If there was some bullying going on, negative things people have said about them or cruel comments and then things you wish you had done or said down here about family. You could have them put their family all on the tree and then talk about the relationships in the family, the things um, in relationships that are hard or things that are supportive. Honestly, it's like endless what you could do with it. So I like making a bunch of these, having them on hand whenever a teen comes in. Okay, another thing that I always love to have on hand when working with teenagers is collage supplies. So I do collage with teenagers all the time. It's one of these things that everybody really kind of likes. So I like to always have you know, cut up words and images and then little cards that can be any size, but smaller is sometimes helpful with teens because they don't get overwhelmed. If you give them a big, huge piece of paper, they can feel like pressure to fill it, but see how it works with your particular client. And this collage is another intervention that you can use and adapt to whatever the needs are of your particular client at that particular time. I worked at hospice for about 10 years as a grief counselor. I coordinated a children's program there and I ran groups. And um, so this is one that I made in honor of someone in my life that passed away. Her name was Pamela. So we just took pictures and I had some letter stickers and we did that. So the best thing to do, in my opinion, what's worked really well for me is to pre-cut everything. So like on a weekend, when you're watching a movie and you've got a stack of old magazines to pre-cut the words and pictures, because I found that when I just had a stack of magazines and I gave those to the teenagers, they'd get so distracted reading the articles or seeing something interesting. But if I just have, um, I have a whole, I have tons of this stuff. Here's another collage example. I like letter stickers. It's great to have letters or words, um, but you could have a folder of just pages of interesting photos that you've ripped out, but I wouldn't give them just the magazine. And again, you could make this activity, cater this to whatever the need is. They could do a feeling collage, a little collage about the sadness they're telling you about. They could do it about a particularly hard situation that's hard to put into words or understand. They can use images for that. Please um, preface it by saying it doesn't have to look good. It's not about the final product. This is process art. This is not like, you know, something that you even have to share with anybody. It doesn't have to look good or make sense. It's just about using images and words to express yourself. In my office, I've always had an art table and I, you don't have to spend a lot of money if you don't have a budget. You collect stuff from around your house. I've got leaves from outside, nature stuff, rocks. We, we've painted rocks. I've got um, markers, paint, fabric things. I just have a whole bunch of different stuff that allows people to express themselves. And this isn't just for teens. I mean, I, I do this with adults. I do this with little kids too. These are just a few things that you could have on hand that might give you confidence when you have a new client in. I'd love to hear from you in the comments. This is just a few interventions. Um, I've got a million of them. So if any of you think it'd be helpful to hear more strategies, techniques, um, art, 
therapy exercises, things like that, definitely leave it in the comments. Watching, I really appreciate it. I've got a bunch of other videos and more on the way, so make sure you're subscribed that you've liked this video, and I'll see you in my next video, friends. Thanks so much.